session of maths club and um, i hope that it's going to work because of course the thing i always get asked can you do maths can you do maths chrissy can you do some maths but the thing is is that everybody is often at such a different level with maths some people follow quite a structured maths program at home some people just sort of do maths on the go uh, and you're all different ages and everybody's really different so fingers crossed this works um, but any feedback that we get or I get uh, to how to make it better is always welcome. So today we are going to be looking at something called an abacus. You might have an abacus, you might not have an abacus, but it's like a very fancy counting machine really. Sometimes you have ab an abacus when you're little because like little toddlers like to just move the beads um, across the lines or like this one where you can move them over the top. But you don't need an abacus. But it probably would help you if you have some counters or some beads or some coins um, or some little blobs of paper. Uh, it would probably help you today if you have one. But if you have an abacus, wow, then even better. So hello to everybody who is watching live. I can see lots of you joining. So I can see Jaden and Erin and June and Peter and Lucy and Sophie and Willow and Caden and Aniqua and Noah and Theo and Daisy and Matthew and Teddy. And Jaden's already got his abacus. I don't have an abacus, actually. I do like them, but I don't have one. So let's get going. So the one I thought we could do is we could start each week with a little bit of a warm-up to sort of warm up our maths. And then this is going to be kind of uh, led by you. Um, and if you feel like you want more time than anything, then at any point you can pause me. So although I'm not going to be, like, totally live, you might be a few seconds behind but i really 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 want you to do this at your own pace so i don't want you to like get worried uh that i'm going too fast but we're going to do our warm-up today before we move on to anything to do with an abacus but i have a target number of 196 now your grown-ups may have seen this idea on a tv show it's not a, a not, it's not a game show i particularly like um, but it's lots of uh, numbers. So we've got 50, 25, 8, 2, 6 and 1. And what I'd like you to do, you can use adding, you can use subtracting, uh, you can use multiplying, you can use dividing. Can you, you can only use each of those numbers once. So if you use a 50, you can only use the 50 once. If you want to use a 2, you can only use the 2 once. And the idea is, can you use those numbers? Uh, you don't have to use all of them, but can you use those numbers in order to make 196? Okay. Now, if you are super duper duper um, at um, maths, how many, how many ways can you make 196 using these numbers? numbers so this is our little warm-up so you might uh, need a scrap of paper but you might for example start with 50 multiplied by 2 that's going to give you 100 and then you need to get 96 uh, so then you think right how am i going to get 96 i've got 100 uh, 6 eighths are 48 well if i added that that's 148 what happens if i add the 25 how close am i going to get to 196 OK, so can you use all those numbers and get to 196? And I'm going to give you, you can use a calculator if you want, if that helps you. You can use mental maths if you want, um, but can you get to 196? And I'm going to give you two minutes.
Okay, has anybody done it? So I can see that uh, some people have got 186, but not 196. I can see somebody saying if you do 25 times eight, you get 400. Um, so 25 times eight minus six and add two. Does that get you 196? Did anybody else find a different way of doing it? So these are some of the ways uh, that you can do it. So you can do 25 multiplied by eight would give you 200. And then you can add the two, which would give you 202. And you can take away your six, which would give you 196. So that's exactly how the person behind Anna's name did it. Um, so well done. But there are lots of different ways you could have done it. You could have done eight divided into two gives you four. And then you could have done 50 take away four is 46. And then you could have done 20, 25 multiplied by six gives you 150. And then you could have done 150 add 46, which gives you 196. Or there's another way. You could have done 50 add one is 51. Six take away two is four. 51 times four is 204. And then if you take away the eight, you get 196. So there are lots of different ways to do it. But it was hard, but it was just to get you thinking. So even if you didn't get it, and if your grown-ups know what the game show is I'm talking about, um, you know that quite often they never get it and they have like a really clever maths person. Sometimes they don't even get it. So it really doesn't matter. It's all about just having some fun with some numbers. So then this is the next one we're going to do, just to do another little warm up before I introduce you to what we're going to do today. Is, <coughs> excuse me, I'm getting a bit excited. Is what are the next five numbers in each sequence? So pick the one that you think um, might be uh, the best one for you to start with. So some of them are, the beginning ones are a little bit easier. The ones at the end are a little bit more tricky because uh, they're a bit bigger. So if someone was working on their eight times table, that's really good. But can you work out the next five numbers in each sequence? So the first sequence we've got 87, 137, 187, 237, what would be the next five numbers? And then the next one, we've got 42,678. And then we've got 42,668. And then we've got 42,658. What would be the next five in that sequence? So I'm going to give you another two minutes to either try and do all of them or just pick the ones that you fancy and see how well you can do. Are you ready? Off you go. Try and work out the patterns. Okay, how have you got on? So shall we review, reveal the answer? So let's have a little drum roll. So this is the first one. So how these were going up. So if you did the first one, it was, uh, these were the answers. If you did the second one, then these are the answers. And if you did the third one, then these are the answers. The next one, I saw lots of you working really, really hard. 
and then this one. So well done if you did some of them, all of them, um, well done. And that's just a bit of a warm up. So hopefully that's been a, a bit of fun to get you thinking about various numbers. And so what we're gonna do today is we are gonna do investigate an investigation all about an abacus. So here is an abacus. You can see uh, that uh, this abacus has one column uh, or one kind of stick which represents the ones. And then it's got another stick which represents the tens. And because I've got one bead on my ones stick, it means that I've got one. And because I've got one, two, three, four, five beads on my tens column, that stands for 50. So these six beads, because I've got five beads on the 10, and I've got one bead on the one, that visually means 51. Does that make sense? So if I had three beads on my one, my one stick, the one that says off, I would have three. And if I had seven beads on my 10, I would have 70. And together, that would make 73. So that's how an abacus works. It basically, dependent on what uh, the stick represents and how big your abacus goes, uh, depends on what it's representing. But we're gonna start with a stick that represents tens and a stick that represents ones. And so if you've got three beads, what ways can I put them on my abacus to make different numbers? So for example, I could have no beads on my tens and I could put all three beads on my ones. And so that would mean I would have the number three. But I could put one bead on my tens and I could put two beads on my ones and that means I would have the number 12. So what I'm going to do is I am going to give you, if you've got some beads, you can literally write a piece of paper that says tens, write a piece of paper that says ones and you can put them in just columns on your table. You could use an abacus. Some of you are using Lego bricks uh, so or building block bricks, should I say, um, other bricks are available. Um, and could you work it out how many? Now, what I want you to do is not put the answers in the chat to start with. Okay, so some of you are putting them, so I can see some amazing uh, answers from Edward, and I can see some amazing answers from Jaden, um, and some amazing answers for whoever's behind Anna. But actually, I'm going to ask you to keep them to yourself for a minute. So I'm going to uh, just hide those comments a minute because I don't want you to put them in the chat. Does that make sense? So I'm going to give you five minutes to work out how many different numbers you could make on an abacus with three beads. Are we ready? Off we go.
Okay, 30 seconds left. Some people are saying they can only find four answers. Is that what we think, only four answers? If you think only four answers, why can't you make any more than four? What do you think? Right, 10 seconds. Now you can start putting your answers in if you want to. If you're over on uh, Facebook and you want to put your answers in because it's time up. So what answers could we have had? So let's have a little think. We could have had three because we could have put three beads on the ones and that would have been three. We could have had one on the tens and two on the ones and that would have made 12. And then we could have had two on the tens and one on the ones, which would have made 21. And then we could have had three on the tens and none on the ones and that would have made 30s, okay? And so you can't half the beads, absolutely. And I know lots of you that finished a little bit before the five minutes said, well, what happens if you have four beads? So that's the next one we're gonna do. What happens if you have four beads? Can you only make four numbers if you've got four beads? What numbers can you make if you've got four beads? So I'm gonna give you another five minutes. If you are super and you do that within the five minutes, and remember, don't put the answers in the chat until I say, what about if you had five beads? Can you see any patterns? Okay, but we're going to start with four beads. So what numbers can you make if you had four beads? Are we ready? Off we go.
Okay, 20 seconds left. If you've done four beads, pop it in the chat if you'd like to share and you're on Facebook. If you've done five beads, pop it on the, the chat. What have you got this time? Um, so, uh, June says 4, 13, 20, uh, 22, 31. Uh, Jaden says 4, 40, 13, 31, 22. Uh, for four, we've got four, 40, 31, 13, 22. For five, we've got five, 50, 41, 14, 32, 23 from Edward. They look very similar in the pattern. We've got another answer from Sabrina. So you should have had, let's go. We should have found four, 13, 22, 31, and 40. So this time we've got five. And if you did the five beads, if you got onto the X, X, next one, you would have had five, 14, 23, 32, 41, and 50. So that means you would have had six. So then that leads us to thinking about patterns, because somebody says they were already thinking about patterns. Edward said, look, they look similar with their patterns. So can we see? any pattern so when we had three numbers we had 3 12 21 and 30 when we had four we had 4 13 22 31 and 40 and when we had five we had 5 14 23 32 41 and 50 so we can almost see if we're going down the bottom we can see 3 4 5 12 13 14 21, 22, 23, 30, 31, 32, 40, 41, and then 50. So, yeah, we've got some sort of patterns that we can see down in the columns. So that's my next question. If we had six beads without even having to work it out, could you work out what six beads would look like. Can you write the numbers down from looking at this pattern? So it looks like we've got three, four, and five. So it looks like if we had six beads, we would have six. And then we would have, because we've got 12, 13, 14, then we would have 15. So we'd have six, 15. Then you've got, you've got 21, 22, 30. It looks like you'd have 24. So we'd have six, 15. 24, 33, 42, what would be the next one? What would be the next one? Well, the next one would be 51. Well done to everyone behind Mel. Um, and then the last one would be 60. And you could probably do all of the patterns, okay? Because we can predict what numbers six would generate. And we've already worked out that it would how many numbers it would it would generate. So we can see those uh, we can see those patterns. And so this is what I'm going to leave you with our monster investigation. How many and what numbers would six, seven, eight, and nine beads produce? That could be one thing you could look at. You could work all of that out. The second thing is, what if you had ten beads? Why might using 10 beads be different? What would be the difference with using 10 beads? Would you have a problem if you had 10 beads? I'm not going to give you an answer to that. So if you've got 10 beads, what would you do then? And then another thing you might look at is what if you added a hundredths column? So you had three sticks. So you had a stick that represents hundreds, a stick that represents tens, and a stick that represents ones. And you start again with three beads and work out what you could make, and then four beads, and so on. Can you see any patterns if you do it with hundreds, tens, and ones? And you start with three beads, then four beads, then five beads, and so on. What if you added a thousandths column? So you had thousands, hundreds, tens, and ones, and you started with four beads, and then five beads, and then so on. Can you see any patterns then? And are there any patterns with all of the numbers that you found in the entire investigation? And if you're really super duper, 
Can you predict what you would find if you had tens of thousands, thousands, hundreds, tens, and ones? So basically, you can do anything that you want dependent on your level. So you could just do a maths investigation one, you could start at maths investigation four, or you could do all four of these monster investigations. So if you would like to uh, have um, the abacuses and uh, you know the sheets, then do head over to the Home Education Live Lessons Maths Club resource pack one. Um, and download it. And I am going to, in a minute, put up on Facebook an amazing Abacus Fun sharing post over in our Facebook group and come and share what you find. So what patterns do you find? Why does 10 break the pattern, Jaden? What would you get if you got to, uh, if when you get to 100, Edward? So have an investigation at home, share what you found, uh, with me over on our Facebook page. And I will see you next week uh, where you're going to need some rough paper and some pencils. And we're going to be investigating chairs. Hmm, interesting. I'll see you soon.